Hey everyone, welcome back to the Civ Razor Move. This time I'm going to be taking a look at a touchscreen that I've bought and seeing if we can fit it into the back of the robot. So let's open it up and take a look at that. So we're going to do a little bit of an unboxing. Um, so this is described as the Jun Electric for Raspberry Pi 7 inch capacitive touchscreen HD monitor. So what we get in the box, um, there's a USB cable here, I believe that's for the touch screen, the touch screen functionality. There's a nice little setup guide. I have, I, I do have to tell you, this is not the first time I've got this out of the box. I have uh, already had a play with this. You've probably already seen a, a little preview video that I've released on this. And I did find these instructions actually really useful in setting this up. Uh, it ex explains how to use it for the Raspberry Pi 3 and also the Raspberry Pi 4 somewhere. Yeah, the Raspberry Pi 4 and then also for Windows desktop computers it explains there, but um, I didn't set it up that way. I followed these for Raspberry Pi 4 instructions and I found it very useful. Then we've got the actual screen itself. It's really quite a nice looking display and as I said I have run this so I've seen it working and it's it's really nice. Let's put that back in for the minute. And then the other things you get are a, a flat US oh, sorry a flat HDMI cable. Quite neat. I'm not sure if I'm going to use it. Um, I'll just show you the other thing that comes with it and we'll see if that works out. That'll decide whether I use this or not. In fact, I almost certainly won't use this because the Raspberry Pi 4 has a mini or a micro HDMI. can't remember exactly what it's called now. And then we also get this, which is basically standard HDMI to standard HDMI um, adapter. It, it looks a little strange. I didn't really know what that was for, but I'll briefly try and explain it. That pops in here, got the HDMI connector on the end and it says there touch and power. I found that we didn't need the power. I think we can power it through the uh, touch USB lead. And then we've got the HDMI here which this connects into like this. Now this screen has clearly been designed for the Raspberry Pi. These four connections, these, these four mountings here exactly line up with a Raspberry Pi so you clearly intended to attach a Raspberry Pi onto here and then this connector will plug into the Raspberry Pi's HDMI port making it really quite a neat little solution. The only problem I have with it is it's described for use with the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Raspberry Pi 4 but clearly this full size HDMI connector is no good for the Raspberry Pi 4. So what I did, a quick uh, Google online, and I think I came up with uh, eBay, and I bought this little alternative, which is the standard HDMI to, I can't remember now whether this is called a mini or a micro HDMI connector, but it, it fits the Raspberry Pi 4. So I'm hoping that that is going to plug in there, and we can attach the Raspberry Pi 4 onto there, and that this should line up with the... HDMI port. Now I'm actually not going to use these four fixings here. I'm going to print myself a 3D printed bracket across here and we'll, we'll mount the Pi onto that. Uh, I didn't really understand how you're supposed to fix into these. I didn't want to start putting screws into there for fear of damaging what's underneath. I think you probably intended to remove this panel and attach it from the other side but I don't want to mess around with that. So I'm just going to design a little 3D printed bracket. So that's basically the touch screen. And I'll show you what my intention is. So we've got the back of the Emove here with this space that's designed to take a tablet. And what my intention is, is to mount this screen in the back here like this with a Raspberry Pi attached onto the back of it. 
Now I know the Raspberry Pi probably won't be powerful enough to power the entire robot, but it will at least operate this screen and may be able to do a few other functions as well. Um, longer term, I might upgrade it. So what I need to do is come up with a, a design for a bracket or a surround to go around this screen, which will kind of turn it into a, something that resembles a tablet. And we should be able to just snap it in here exactly as the tablet was designed to do. So that's the plan. So let's take a look at uh, Fusion 360 and see if we can come up with some design. So this is the finished part in Fusion 360. I'm not going to show you every single step I did because it would take too long, but I'll just give you a rough overview of the process I took. So I started with a simple rectangle, just specified the width and height that I wanted. And then I used Cura's push-pull function to create some thickness. Next I added some radius corners on the edges. And then I proceeded to cut a section out of the middle for the screen, again just by specifying a rectangle and using the push-pull to actually cut the shape out. And then basically just proceeded with that, cutting sections out and creating raised profiles, just measuring the screen to know what size to make each piece. And then what's nice in Fusion 360 is you can actually select the body, the 3D body, and save it as an STL file so we can print it out. I'm not really confident it's going to work first time, so what I've decided to do is print one out in a really low quality. So I'm doing a 0.3 layer height and only 10% infill hoping that it would print quite quickly um, but it is still taking several hours so it's kind of annoying because it's probably going to just be a throwaway item anyway but one thing I have noticed this is really beneficial having the very large print bed on the Creality CR10 I don't think I would have been able to do this on my previous printer so that is one advantage of the CR10 the 300 millimeter print bed. So this is the first one, the draft version. I'll just show you how it turned out. I had a bit of trouble getting it off the bed because it stuck to the bed so well. I had to prise it off with a scraper and I kind of overdid it. It, it cracked here. Um, it's, it's only very slight. You could, you could even get away with that if you glued it. Um, and then this side here uh, a, a chunk of it sort of stuck to the bed. I have heard horror stories where people say if you print with PETG um, it can take chunks of the glass bed out with it but I didn't find that was the case. I found that the chunk came out of the part rather than the glass um, and this, this part was left stuck onto the bed. I mean even, even that you could um, sand and fill that down and we could paint this thing over and I think you could actually get away with using this. But I am going to print another one the main reason why is it's not quite tall enough. I really need to increase the height of this by about three millimeters, I think. So I am going to print another one. I'm actually going to do the next one in black and I'm going to make it just a few millimeters taller. I did try the screen in it and it is a, a very nice fit. It's, it's very tight, but it does fit in there perfectly. So I'll do another one. We'll just make it slightly taller. Um, one thing I did discover when I came back to the bed the next day to get this little chunk of plastic off the bed is that it literally had just fell off the bed so what I think I'll try next time is let the bed completely cool down before I try and remove the part and I get the feeling that it will probably just pop straight off okay so this is the second one I think it actually in some ways came out better I did um, let the bed completely cool before trying to remove it and when I came back to it I actually left it overnight when I came back to it um, it had literally popped off the bed itself so it, I could just lift it straight up it wasn't stuck at all so that solved that problem so we haven't got any chunks taken out of this one 
I actually used hairspray um, as an adhesive this time to see if that would make any difference. And what it's actually done is given me uh, a slight sort of rough texture to it, very, very subtle, but it's not quite as uh, shiny as printing directly onto the glass. So the hairspray gives you a slightly different finish and I think it worked quite well but I did find this one um, I don't know if it will show up on camera yeah probably there you can see this area across here this whole corner has warped slightly it's sh it's shrunk it's uh, sl slightly uh, come off the bed and, and warped or shrunk whatever you want to call that um, in fact it's actually quite bad it's quite across here and then just down this edge here and then um, slightly into that corner as well the first one did the same but but not as bad uh, the first one only warped on one corner I believe Let me just check that here just this one corner here it's a little bit harder to show up on the white but you can see it's just that little piece of the corner Actually, when you get the part on the back of the robot, you can't notice that very much. So even though this one has um, warped quite bad, I'm, I'm actually just going to proceed with this and use this. Um, you can see it when the light catches it, but when it's um, standing vertical on the robot, it doesn't really show up. So I'm not that bothered about it. I will replace it eventually, um, but for now, I'll just go with this one. So let's try the screen in it, see how that fits. So it's kind of offset. There's a, a larger uh, space in the bottom and a smaller space in the top. Um, that's just because of the way the screen is designed. It's got a, a thicker part to the surround here and a thinner part of the top. Um, the actual left and right edges are slightly offset as well. I've designed all of that into the part. So we can just pop that in there. You can see it's a, it's a very tight fit. We can just push that down. It's, you know, goes in quite easy despite it being so tight. I'm just going to put four screws in the corners. I'm using number four by six millimeter screws or number four by one quarter inch. So that's worked out quite nicely actually. So there's the screen in, I do need to give it a little bit of a clean. I'm also not sure if there's a protective film on there but I've left it on if it is there. It looks like it's fitted nice and flat. So we can go ahead now and give this a, a go at fitting it into the back of the robot just as a test fit. So just a quick check which is actually the bottom. The writing uh, tells you which way up it needs to go. So this is the bottom. And we just pop it in there. Make sure it's uh, pushed all the way down. And then we can literally just snap it in. Like that. I think it looks really nice. And this, the warping is this area here, but I don't know. Maybe the light is catching it, we'll see it. But I will replace it eventually. But for now, I think that, that looks quite good, actually. So I'm just going to go with that. So it's quite nice tight fit in these um, rounded corners uh, it snapped in quite well this it's it's really secure I mean it does it does move a little I'll, sh I'll try to show you move a little in the corners um, but I mean there's no way it's going to fall out it won't move around it's on its own it's only if I actually 
press on the corners. Um, other than that, it's actually really secure in there. There's absolutely no way that's going to fall out. I actually think it's going to be a little tricky to get it back out again, actually, but we should be okay. So we'll leave it there. And what we'll do in the next video is we'll introduce the Raspberry Pi 4 to the robot. We'll design a bracket and get the Raspberry Pi attached onto the back of that screen and get the HDMI connected up. I have actually already got my robot lab running on the Raspberry Pi 4, but I haven't tested it on the robot. So when we bring that in next time, that should nicely tie everything together and we'll be able to operate the robot completely free of any external wires and we'll no longer need the external laptop that we've used up till now. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.